Hi guys, welcome to today's lecture. My name is Charles Abani. We're going to be looking at a detailed study on ratio. So first thing we need to know is what is ratio? A ratio is a mathematical comparison of two similar quantities. So whenever you are solving any question comparing two quantities that are similar, then you're dealing with ratio. Okay. There are other mathematical concepts where you can compare different quantities. But for ratio, we are comparing similar quantities. For example, if you have a situation where you are comparing number of boys to number of girls, you are dealing with ratio. The reason is they are similar. They are children, right? Next, if you are comparing number of apples to mangoes and oranges, then you are also dealing with ratio because they are all fruits. Okay? So I would like to know which other similar quantities can you compare in ratio? Leave it in the comment section. Okay, let's go further. The symbol for ratio is this. So this symbol means is to. One item is to another item, okay? So you're comparing one item to another item. For example, if you have two is to three, what does two is to three mean? Two is to three means that for every two of one item, you will have three of another item. This is a very important topic because its application can be seen in different areas of life. For example, in pharmaceuticals, where they produce uh, drugs, for you to have a particular drug, a particular drug is a product or a combination of different chemicals in particular quantities, right? So if you bring these quantities together in an amount that is not good for the human consumption, then instead of it becoming a drug, it becomes a poison, right? So for you to produce a particular drug, there is a ratio of each ingredient that is needed for that drug, right? The same thing happens in civil engineering. For example, if you want to mold concrete, you need different quantities, but all of them are similar because you are using those quantities to produce concrete. You need water, you need cement, you need fine aggregates, and you need coarse aggregates. So for you to get a particular strength for that concrete, then there is a ratio of each of these materials needed to produce the concrete. So this topic is a very practical topic in real life situation. So in this lesson, we're going to look at three areas basically. We're going to look at the concept of equivalent ratios. And then next, we're going to look at how to calculate ratios when you are given the number of items. And then finally, we're going to look at how to calculate the number of items when you are given the ratio. So for each of these three areas, I'll be leaving an assignment for you to solve at the end of each of these three topics. So section one, we're going to look at equivalent ratios and there will be an assignment at the end of that. Section two, we're going to look at how to find the ratio when you're given the quantities. There will be an assignment at the end of that. And then section three, you have how to calculate the quantities when you're given the ratio. Let's start. So the first thing we are looking at is equivalent ratios. So what are equivalent ratios? Equivalent ratios are ratios with the same simplest form, okay? So whenever you have two or more ratios that have the same simplest form, those ratios are called equivalent ratios. Example, we have one is to six, 20 is to 120, and five is to 30. So we have three ratios here. The first one is one is to six. The second is 20 is to 120. And the third is five is to 30. Now, all these are equivalent ratios. How do we know that they are equivalent ratios? Remember, they must have the same simplest form. So if you have a particular ratio and you want to find the simplest form of that ratio, you need to look for two numbers that will divide both sides of this ratio. Here we have one and here we have six. What can divide both of them? nothing there's no number that can divide both one and six apart from one and if you divide both of them by one you're still going to get one and six so let's go over here here we have 20 and 120 what number can divide both 20 and 120 the answer is 20 20 can divide 20 20 can divide 120 so if we divide them by 20 20 divided by 20 is going to give us one 120 divided by 20 is going to give us six now let's look over here, five is to 30. What can divide both five and 30? The answer is five. So 
5 divided by 5, 30 divided by 5. 5 divided by 5 is going to give us 1. 30 divided by 5 is going to give us 6. So you can see that the simplest form of these two ratios is 1 is to 6, 1 is to 6. That shows that these three ratios are equivalent ratios. So we're going to go further to look at two examples where we're going to write ratios in their simplest form. So let's look at these examples we have here. We are told to write each of these ratios in its simplest form. So here we have 7 is to 14. So number 1, 7 is to 14. So we are going to look for a number that will divide both 7 and 14 without leaving a remainder. What will be that number? The only number that can divide both 7 and 14 without leaving a remainder is 7. So we're going to divide 7 by 7 and divide 14 by 7. So we have divided by 7, divided by 7. 7 divided by 7 is going to give us 1 is to 14 divided by 7 is going to give us 2. This means that 7 is to 14 in its simplest form is 1 is to 2. So this is important in sharing items. For example, if you have a number of items that you want to share, you can decide to share them 7 here, 14 here, and at the end of the day, you have equal values, or you can decide to share for every one you have here, you put two here. Two different process of sharing because of the ratios are different, but at the end of the day, you are still going to share the way you're supposed to share. So now let's look at the second one. We have two, 15 is to 25. So 15 is to 25, we're going to look for a number that is going to divide both 15 and 25 without leaving a remainder. What will be that number? The number is 5. So 15 divided by 5 and 25 divided by 5. 15 divided by 5 is going to give us 3. 25 divided by 5 is going to give us 5. This means 15 is to 25 in its simplest form is 3 is to 5. Okay. Now let's look at the final one. So number 3 we have 32 is to 48. So what number can divide both 32 and 48 without leaving a remainder? I think, let's go with 8. 32 divided by 8 is going to give us 4. So we have 4 is to 48 divided by 8 is going to give us 6. So 32 is to 48 is the same thing as 4 is to 6. But is this the lowest form? What I mean is that, is there any number that can divide 4 and 6 without leaving a remainder? The answer is yes. 2 can divide both of them. So we divide both sides by 2. 4 divided by 2 is going to give us 2. 6 divided by 2 is going to give us 3. Is there any number that can divide both 2 and 3 without leaving a remainder? The answer is no. This means 32 is to 48 in its simplest form is 2 is to 3. So next, I'm going to write down the assignment for this particular section. Let's do that. So what you should do right now is pause the video, write down the assignment, solve it and then if you're in the whatsapp group you can submit it at the end of the week but if you're not you can just leave the answers to this question as a comment in the comment section let's go to section two so in this section we're looking at how to find the ratio when the number of items are given okay so we're going to start with this very simple example we are told that there are 24 boys and 16 girls in a class. We are expected to calculate the ratio of girls to boys. So it is very important we take note of this part of the equation. It says girls to boys. This is different from if it said boys to girls. So when it says girls to boys, it means that when you are writing the ratio, the girls will come first and the boys will come next. In a situation you have boys to girls, that would mean that the boys come first and the girls come next, okay? But in this question, we are told girls to boys. So that means the ratio of girls to boys, okay? So how many girls do we have in the class? We have 16 girls. So this is ratio of 16 is to number of boys is 24. We have 24. So now we've gotten the ratio. The ratio is 16 is to 24. But from the previous session, whenever you have a ratio like this, you need to write it in its simplest form. So is there any number that can divide both 16 and 24 without leaving a remainder? 
The answer is yes. Eight can divide both of them. So you divide both of them by eight. 16 divided by eight. 24 divided by eight. 16 divided by eight is gonna give you two is to 24 divided by eight is gonna give you three. So ratios are always written in their simplest form. So yes, the ratio is 16 is to 24, but in its simplest form, the ratio is two is to three. Are we sure of that? Let's see. Is there any number that can divide both two and three without leaving a remainder? The answer is no. This means that two is to three is the simplest form of the ratio, okay? So this is the answer to this question. Let's see the next question. So let's look at this second question. We are told that a boy has 48 mangoes, 30 oranges, and 64 lemons in a basket. What is the ratio of oranges to mangoes to lemons? This means in our arrangement, orange comes first, mangoes come next, and lemons come last. So we have oranges is to mangoes is to lemons. So how many oranges do we have? We have 30 oranges, so 30 is to how many mangoes do we have? 48 mangoes is to how many lemons do we have? 64 lemons. So next we're going to look for a number that can divide all these values without leaving a remainder. So let's see. Let's bring it over here. We have 30 is to 48 is to 64. So all you need to do is look for a number that can divide all of them. So 2 can divide all these values. So divided by 2, divided by 2, divided by 2. 30 divided by 2 gives you 15. Is to 48 divided by 2 gives you 24. Is to 64 divided by 2 gives you 32. Okay. So at this point, is there any number that can divide both 15, 24, and 32 without leaving a remainder? 2 can divide 24 and 32, but cannot divide 15. 3 can divide 15 and 24 but cannot divide 32. 5 can only divide 15. 4 can divide both this and this, but cannot divide 15. So there is really no number that can divide all three values without leaving a remainder. This means the ratio of oranges to mangoes to lemons is 15 is to 24 is to 32. Very simple. So next I'm going to drop the assignment for this section and then we go to the last section. So this is the question you're going to solve on your own. It says, Jane bought notebooks for $32, pens for $64, and textbooks for $80. What is the ratio of the cost of notebooks to textbooks to pens? So solve this, including the previous one from the first section. And then if you're part of the WhatsApp group, that makes it two sets of questions. If you're not part of the WhatsApp group, please leave your answer as a comment in the comment section. Okay, now let's go to the third section. Okay, now we are going to look at how to find the number of items when the ratio is given, okay? So we are going to start with this example. We are told that John and Frank earned the sum of $320. John and Frank share the money in the ratio seven is to three, that means John took a ratio of 7 and Frank took a ratio of 3. How much does each person earn? Okay, so now we know the total sum that was earned. We know the ratio that they used to share the money, but we don't know how much each person earned. So let's see how to solve that. So whenever you're solving a question like this, you're going to divide each person's ratio by the total ratio and multiply by the total sum. Okay, so John, let's see how much John earned. So what you earn is John's ratio all over total ratio multiplied by the total sum that was n, which is 320. So 320. Okay. So John's ratio was 7. So we have 7 all over. The total ratio is 7 plus 3, which is 10, multiplied by the total sum, 320. So 1 0 is going to cancel out 1 0. We have 7 multiplied by 32. So 7 multiplied by 32 is going to give us. 224. That means John earned $224 out of the $320. So now we've known how much John earned. So how much did Frank earn? 
So there are two ways of doing it. One way is shorter. All you need to do is, the first way is go through the process that we use to solve John's earnings. So if it is for Frank, you put the ratio for Frank divided by the total ratio, multiply by the total sum end, or you simply do the total sum end minus the amount that John earned. So because they are just two persons. So this will give us $320 minus $224. That means Frank earned $96. So very simple, okay? So whenever you are giving the ratio, I expected to calculate the number of items. All you need to do is divide the individual ratio by the total ratio and multiply it by the total amount or total number of items. Let's look at another example. Now let's look at the last example in this lesson. We're told that for five grams of potatoes are shared between three people in the ratio three is to one is to five. So this quantity of potato is shared to three persons. Okay. What weight in grams of potato do they each get? So we are asked the quantity in grams, but we are given the quantity in kilograms. So to make our work easy, the first thing we need to do is convert from kilogram to grams. To convert from kilograms to grams, all we need to do is multiply the value in kilograms by 1,000. So 45 kilograms is equal to 45,000 grams, okay? So now we are looking at the values in grams. So just as we did in the previous example, all we need to do is divide each of the ratios by the total ratio and then multiply by the total quantity. So let's call the persons A, B, and C. So A, what does A get? The ratio for A is 3 all over. The total ratio is 9. 3 plus 1 plus 5 is 9. So we have 9 multiplied by 45,000. Okay? So now 45 divided by 9 is going to give us 5. So we have 5 and we have 1. So this will give us 3 multiplied by 5,000. This means person A got 15,000 grams. Okay, next let's look at for person B. Person B. This our ratio is 1. So we have 1 over 9 multiplied by 45,000. So 9 here, 1. 9 here, 5. So we have 1 multiplied by 5,000. And this gives us 5,000 grams. So person B got 5,000 grams. What about person C? So for person C, we have 5 over 9 multiplied by 45,000. 9 here, 1. 9 here, 5. So we have 5 multiplied by 5,000. This gives us 25,000 grams. So this means person C got 25,000 grams. So this is a simple way of finding the quantity for each of the individuals or each of the items when the ratio is given and the total quantity is given. Okay, so now I'm going to write the assignment for this section and then that will bring us to the end of today's class. Okay, so this is the assignment for this section. 2,400 people attended a concert. The ratio of males to females is 5 is to 11. The ratio of children to adults is 3 is to 7. The question is, how many boys attended the concert? So this is a little bit technical, unlike the first two assignments. So you need to cool down, read through it again and again to understand the story. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. If you did, don't forget to like this video to support this platform. Also, you can leave a comment in the comment section. This helps to boost the video with the algorithm. And finally, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Share this video with your friends. I'm so glad you were able to watch up to this point. See you in the next lesson. Have a wonderful day. Bye.